You have found yourself on another episode of Locked on Bulls. On today's episode, me and Pat are going to discuss Zach Levine being sent down to the Windy City Bulls. Does that mean his return is imminent? We're also going to talk about and ask the question, can the Bulls start off the year with a win? And Goran Dragic retires from the NBA. Pat has a theory on, on, on that. We're going to get into all that and more on today's Locked on Bulls. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls, a member of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. That's Pat, the designer, host, and creator of the Windy City Breeze and host of the Chicago Bears podcast over at ESPN 1000. <laughs> I'm Hayes, bro, host bro. And creator of Chicago Bulls and Chicago Bears Central. What's going on there, guy? You I hurt, forgot bro. about it, bro. 30 hit me hard, bro. I ain't even made it to 30 yet, bro. I swear for the Lord, I left ESPN today. And you know how, like, you open the door and, like, somebody be like, oh, like, they coming behind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, like, try and get out. So I, like, turned real quick to try and, like, grab the door for them. Bro, I feel like somebody ripped my arm out of socket, bro. I was like, okay, yep, I'm done. I don't That's know crazy. what happened, bro. I have no explanation for it. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by pa- Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. All right, with that said, Pat, we got news today that uh, Zach Levine is being assigned to the Windy City Bulls uh, for, for practice. This is and a mark in, in the um, release that it is the final hurdle uh, of him being cleared, which means that. We could see Zach Levine back as early as tonight against the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, there's a complete possibility he's not traveling with the team to clear that last hurdle. But if if that goes right, we could very well be seeing Zach Levine on a basketball court in a Chicago Bulls jersey before the end of the week. Here we go. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's going to be very, very interesting to kind of see what this Bulls team is going to look like if Zach Levine joins this team again, is back on the court with this team again, what the vibe of this team is going to be like, who's going to get the shots, who's not going to get the shots, is he going to ease himself back in? Is he going to go hard and be like, I need like 17 shots in the first half? I think the weird part about Zach Levine is, right, I feel like those are the questions that we've always asked about him as a player, right? Because Zach will go through a first half where he puts up like six shots and we'll be like, that's not enough. And then the second half, he puts up 22. We're like, oh, okay, there it is. Like, I, I don't know what to expect with this. And, and it sucks because, right, like you've kind of you, – you're going to see it against a a depleted uh, Philadelphia team. I don't believe Embiid is still slated to come back. Now, the Chicago Bulls also have a lot of guys missing as well. Um, mm-hmm. But are we going to get Zach Levine and Nikola Vucevic back in the same game? Like there's a possibility for that. And I think it's going to be really, really interesting to kind of see – you know, what kind of an impact that's going to have on the team and who's the person that has to take the backseat. Yeah, going to be hugely interesting to see how you incorporate Zach Levine back, right? And uh, I know people are going to ask, no, you're probably not going to bring him off the bench. He's probably going right back into the starting line. Right back in. Um, now, I th- what do you think the most important thing is when Zach comes back? Do you think it's that you have to look at Zach and say, we still need you to be you? Do you think it's what Kobe's shown? You're looking at Kobe and saying, we really don't want to re- reduce Kobe's role. Like, how, how would you incorporate Zach Levine back into that lineup? Well, I think what's going to change is, right, Alex Caruso is going to go to the bench. That helps the bench unit out. but and, and you lose a little bit of the defense that we've been able to see in that starting lineup. Um, I, I like kind of how the lineup is shaped up right now. Maybe it's a little bit of a better offensive lineup. But I think the fact that we've been able to create offense off of defense has been really key to some of the games that we've seen the Chicago Bulls be able to go out there and win. When, when you see – you know, Kobe White flying down the court, catching a a, a, a a layup, basically, because Alex Caruso just got a steal off of some dude that ran into Patrick Williams, spun out, and immediately got the ball stripped away from him. You know, you're not going to see that nearly as much without AC on the floor. Uh, and, and with Zach Levine incorporating back into that, you just hope that the offensive game of the Chicago Bulls is a lot more um, with both him and Kobe in the starting lineup again. Like, and, and, and not the... 
if we being real, AC been knocking that tray ball down this year. So it's not like AC hasn't been contributing offensively, but the only hope is that you end up just, right, you have an offense that becomes one of the high-powered offenses in the NBA. You start to average. I mean, I think the Bulls right now are averaging about 119. You would hope if you reinsert Zach Levine back in that lineup, you get that up to maybe 123 to 125. I, but, like, I, I just, it, we'll see. Because it didn't happen before. It hasn't happened to this point. In fact, the team went completely in the toilet right after Zach Levine requested the trade. But maybe, I, I will say this, maybe this uh, uh, um, stretch of games has changed the mindset of everyone else on the floor. I was actually watching um, Gordon, not Gordon Dragic, what, uh, Gordon Hayward was on, uh, what's, what's the freaking podcast that Paul George got. I can't think of the name of it. Some podcast P ain't it? Something like that. Um, and he was talking about what happened with everybody in Boston when they were all together. And, you know, it was kind of like the young guys got confidence and was like, hey, bro, we don't need y'all no more. Like, y'all kind of <laughs> in the way. I mean, like, I, I and that's not what I wanted to be here with Zach Levine, but maybe that's the situation that the Chicago Bulls are in where the young guy's mindset has changed. Maybe Patrick Williams ain't okay going back to being the fourth or fifth scoring option on the team. Maybe like, hey, man, I just started getting some love around here. You know how long it's been since I got some love out of it? So I, I don't. I, I am just very intrigued to see kind of what kind of immediate changes are going to happen with this team. Yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 because on paper, there's a lot of things that you can look at and say that this could work and could Zach the game could fit in perfectly. There's a lot of things you look at and say, hey, this could be kind of ugly. And it's really going to be up to head coach Billy Donovan and, and what he does and what they implement to try to get it to work, the actions that they work in there for Zach Levine upon his return, how much Zach is really ready. What has he learned? How does his mentality change? Because tell you what. To hear that, to, to request a trade and to hear that don't nobody want you, that should be humbling. Hey, yo, Jalen Johnson came back and got four interceptions because of that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, he oh, said, man. I want to be the highest paid player in the league and, or highest paid DB in the league, and y'all got a trade for me. And teams laughed at him and sent them back. <laughs> Yeah, now he wants to be Chicago forever, and he's play. Hey, listen, a Pro Bowl se season from Jalen Johnson. If that if that's the type of bounce back that Zach Levine has for the Bulls this season, uh, more power to him. And 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 listen, it, maybe that is the case, right? Because again, I said this the other day. One of the main reasons, of course, Billy Donovan still being here is the biggest reason. But one of the main reasons that Zach didn't want to be here is because it was the same thing. It was running it back. It was doing the same stuff over and over again. Um, at least that's what we had heard from his team, right? And the, this Bulls team over the last 15 games that he hasn't been there, that's not the same team. That's not the same running it back. We're doing the same thing over and over again. Maybe he feels differently. Maybe he maybe now seeing the system without him, he's a little bit more prone to buy into the system that uh, Billy Donovan is running. And we'll you see. You can't it. say it's the system now. You got to look at it and say, maybe it was me. Not saying hey, that bro, all you know the Bulls I mean? problems it was him, but we <laughs> talk about the system working. Listen, the system's been working for now 15 games, man. And and it, it's working flawlessly, and it's the mindset has changed, and the team is sitting there saying, listen, we can do things defense. And, and it, I think the part where Zach Levine, if he were to buy back into this team, if he was to get back on board with kind of what the Bulls are doing here, the part that you would hope is actually, you know, able to come out of this is those moments where, the offense just falls off a cliff and we go three, mm. four minutes without lows. And they've been a lot far and fewer between without Zach Levine on the floor. We're not talking about these every game now. Uh, but maybe in those moments, that's the time where it's like, hey, Zach, we need somebody to go out there and be the offensive juggernaut. Can it be you? Um, so we'll end up seeing what it's what it's going to be. Let me ask you this, right? And, and maybe this is more towards Billy Donovan. Do we think that maybe the uptick in play is the fact that Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan aren't occupying the same spots? Or I'm sorry, Alice Caruso and DeMar DeRozan aren't occupying the same spots, like at times how Zach Levine and DeMar do? Well, that's the thing is I don't think theoretically, and if you look at their shot chart and where they're most efficient, they shouldn't really operate the same spots. Um, and that goes back to head coach Billy Donovan. That goes back to Billy Donovan coaching this and running a scheme that it's like, Zach, you're going to run a lot on the perimeter, but listen, we're running you off 90% catch and shoots. We need you to be Rip Hamilton, but from the three-point line, 
this you still got plenty of shots, but you're you're playing a more effective game. So I think that they that like yes, don't get me wrong, there is some overlap there, but I don't know yeah. if that was a system more so if that was the player's strengths because where Zach Levine is the most effective at is catching the ball and driving or shooting a, a three. You got to stop them step back threes, but other than that, I think that this could still work. It's just. You're going to have to trust Kobe. You're going to have to trust Vooch to really facilitate. And it's going to have to force Zach Levine to not have the ball in his hands as much and maybe even get two, three less shots a game, but he can be more effective. And I think that, that hopefully that's the that's the way that goes. I'm going to throw it back to you before we end this segment, though. Question. Um, hey, if you, hey, 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 hey. I don't no. care if you don't like questions. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm going to throw it back to you. It's crazy. I didn't say I was going to throw it back on you. I was going to throw it back to you. There's yeah, two different I, things there, bro. I don't like it. <laughs> First of all, I, I listen, bro. We, we, You know what we're putting on people? We're giving them pause traumatic stress deal, <laughs> disorder, bro. That's what we're giving <laughs> them, bro. Like, <laughs> like we got we to gotta stop. We're giving them pause. <laughs> Yes, PTSD. Hey, y'all you know, let like, us know in the comments if that was crazy or not, though. That was that sounded insane to me. Anyway, go ahead. Oh, um, <laughs> what percentage do you give it that, that it works when Zach Levine comes back? Uh, 35%. 35%. That's I've, 35% I've, that it does work. Yeah, that it does work. Okay. I've I've seen it, it's it. I know it's I Based on how much Zach Levine has played here, right? It's a very small sample size, the winning that the Chicago Bulls have done. Yeah. But th there's something that about his game or about how much his game commands in our offense that when he wasn't there, a, a switch flipped and the team got better. It's not like the team just got a little bit better. Like Patrick Williams had the best month of his career, pretty much. Yeah. No, it was the best month of his career. <laughs> like, yeah. It's not like, oh, like, it, it was small things. Like, Kobe White became an elite point guard. Yeah. Like, not like not like he was really elite. Like, he was one of the best three-point shooting point guards in the NBA. One of the best three-point shooters in the NBA. One of the better facilitators. Like, that don't just happen magically and last for a month. <laughs> yeah, facts, facts. All right, next up, though, man, we're going to move into this next topic uh, in which we're going to be talking about uh, can the Bulls start the, uh, the the year off with a win playing against the Philadelphia 76ers yet again. But before we get into that, got to talk to you guys about one of our sponsors, and that is Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. We're the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, inclu including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Testing my skills on, on prize picks this basketball season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 in just a few taps. Prize picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of, of players and stat types are what make prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Uh, prize picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday prize picks discounts player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. Go to prizepix.com slash locked on NBA. That's prizepix.com slash locked on NBA. Uh, and then yeah, go check out prize picks. All right. With that said, <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, uh, that was good. That was funny. Hey, with that said, uh, Pat, uh, we got the Philadelphia 76ers. We are heading out on the road to Philly to face the Sixers. This is a team that um, – uh, do we still – do we have word on if Joel Embiid is expected to still be out or not? I uh, – let me let me check that while you uh, sit there and break this game down. I will look that up for you. Cause, yeah, this uh, is Last important I game. heard, he was not supposed to be back. He's not supposed to be back? Uh, yeah, because I checked that injury report. It doesn't look like he's listed, at least not on ESPN – that doesn't really mean much because ESPN doesn't really update stuff. They haven't even updated players' weights in like three years after they've come into the league. They still got Zion at his rookie weight, and we all know. So latest on Nick Nurse, say, uh, latest that we got from Nick Nurse is him saying that he is very hopeful that he'll be ready for the next one. Uh, okay. Talking about playing the Chicago Bulls again. All right. Well, uh, they played them at home on January 2nd. Yep, so important game for the Bulls. We know that the 76ers are going to be looking out for their revenge in this game, Pat. When you look at this, man, what, what, what do you think the Bulls can start off with a win? <sighs> Depends on if Joel Embiid is playing or not. I'm going to be real with you. If Joel's playing, we got a problem at the center position. We really do. Um, because 
Andre Drummond, as, as good as he can play, right, as good as he can be, um, Joel Embiid is going to force this guy to be in foul trouble. It's just it's a, a common theme with Drum. It's it's a common theme with Joel Embiid going up against Drum. Um, I think that he's fouled out three or four times while going up against Embiid. So it makes it really tough um, to to go out there and try and defend Joel Embiid. Now, do, is there some combination of guys that maybe we could put on him? Um, can we put Terry Taylor out there? Like, I, like it's Joel Embiid. He's going to go for 50 if he's playing. I just, I, I don't know. Like, that, that this one feels like a, a tough uphill battle at the center position right there. Um, and the biggest question is going to be, can you kind of cancel everybody else out, right? Defensively, what are the Bulls going to be able to do versus Tyrese Maxey? Defensively, are you going to be able to, you know, slow down uh, and and keep up with a guy that shouldn't be getting away from you? And Nicholas Batum, at his age, how do we keep losing him in that last game? That mess was killing me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's not even that offensively he was murdering us, but he kept being wide open. I was like, "Is this their new fork and cork, Miles? Is this is this the new guy that they got?" But it's always one on every team, bro. There's always one, bro. Every single time. But I just I I think that this is going to be a really tough game for the Bulls to get in Philadelphia as well. You know they're looking for revenge. If Embiid is playing, this is going to be a very uh very tough game for the Chicago Bulls. Yeah, I mean, listen, and but we've seen the Bulls beat them with uh with Embiid playing before. The thing yep. I'm a little bit worried about, let's say if Zach Levine does make his return um today against the Philadelphia 76ers again, not reporting on that, we don't know for sure. I'm a little bit worried about uh it, it being too much being worked back in against a big time opponent that it may cause a little bit of things to be off a little bit. But yep. overall, like I think we know what we have to do. We rebound the ball well, we have to do that extremely well. Um, regardless if Vucic is back or not, um, Drummond's gonna be hugely important whether starting or coming off the bench and rebounding wise in, in a game like that. So I think when it comes down to it, we can rebound well, take care of the ball, limit turnovers, force some of our of our own, get out in transition. The Bulls can compete with anybody as long as they're playing with the team, moving without the ball, things like that. But um, the thing that I worry about in, the, in a game like this is that how demoralizing it can be if Maxi and Embiid both get on on runs. Yeah. So. And, and just, just in case y'all wondered how bad it's gotten, um, I just looked up Joel Embiid's numbers versus Andre Drummond. <laughs> Dang. This man averages 28 and 11, two and a half assists, and three blocks. And somebody said, I saw it in the last, oh, well, Embiid doesn't want anything to do with Drummond. I'm like, hey, bro, Embiid has cooked Drummond every time they've played. <laughs> Drummond has had one competitive game against Joel Embiid. Well, no, I can't. No, yep, nope. I, actually, I was looking at minutes on that. <laughs> I was looking at the minutes. I thought there was a 38 and 14 game, and I was wrong. His best game versus Joel Embiid was uh, 27 and 9. And That's crazy. Uh, in that game, Joel Embiid put up 40, uh, 37 and 6. And what year was that game, by the way? Uh, that game was in uh, 2019. He was still playing for Detroit. Okay. Yeah, well, Blake Griffin, think, uh, running mate on that team, I believe. So, yeah, not good, not good. I, listen, it, and, and look, this is not this is not a slight to Andre Drummond. Vooch ain't good versus him either. Like Joel Embiid is just a really, really good player. But I, I, I like the point that you brought out about you know slowing down Tyrese Maxey and and how are you going to find a way to do that? I mean, we put it, we've thrown everybody at Maxey at times, and uh, Tyrese Maxey is just a baller, especially when he sees the Chicago Bulls. I think. The last game we played against him is really one of the best games that we've ever played against Tyrese Maxey. He's really been an issue. I remember, what was it, two games? Or, or no, was it the first season that DeMar got here? And Io had to step in? Like, that was, bro, it was like sushi. So just go time. over Tyrese Maxey's last five games against the Chicago Bulls. 26.6 uh, six assists, 22.6 <laughs> assists, 21 points, four assists, 29 points, eight assists, and 20.7 assists. That was the last game where we actually yep. got a dub. Yeah, that's, just, put that's, a, that's our that's our best game versus him, the 20-point game. That's I, crazy. Listen, I'll be getting cooked, bro. <laughs> he do. Yeah. I, I love it. Maxie's always cooked. I, my, Maxie's always cooked Io. Always yeah. cooked Io, bro. So you got two guys that are always getting cooked. Yeah, I mean, maybe Alice Caruso can make a difference in this one, but uh, we we never know with his toes and feet. Uh, <laughs> just just don't he, get stuff. Listen, what? Ever since dipping, ever since Detroit said they wanted to dip their toe in Zach, no, listen, bro. He, he, got a, he got an actual toe injury, dog. Nothing <laughs> was the same. Nothing was the same. <laughs> 
<laughs> Nothing was the same. <laughs> Nothing was the same. <laughs> six, 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 six. Uh, all right, let's get out of this segment before we start breaking down toes again. I'm sick of this. It's like my, Rex Ryan might as well be on this podcast after. <laughs> That's not a toe I like. That's not a toe I like. That's the craziest <laughs> line of all time, bro. He was so bad. He said, "That's not a toe I like." <laughs> Oh, God. He don't like man feet. Uh, the NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get a $150 back in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That is $150 back in bonus bets, win or lose. And the app is so easy to use. There's so many different ways to bet, like same game parlays. Uh, you can find bets in the new tab, Explorer. You can make parlays in the Parlay Hub. The best way to find popular parlays, and more. So visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to make your first bet a layup. That's FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, Pat, man, that's funny. Um, <laughs> so former Bulls legend, and not because of his time playing here, but because of Derrick Rose dunking on him, uh, Goran Dragic has officially retired yeah. from the NBA, man. Uh, you actually said you had a theory in regards to Goran Dragic. What's that theory? So there? I've always had a conspiracy theory on Goran Dragic, right? Because his time in, with the Bulls was nothing, right? Like, what do what he play that the one season? Like, 14 games, 15 games, basically, and then he was done? Mm-hmm. Like, he spent no time with the Chicago Bulls, but he got on the court enough to do one thing. I don't know if y'all remember this, but literally, if you used to Google, he kind of Walt Disney'd us. If you used to Google Goran Dragic, Chicago Bulls, all that popped up was pictures of him getting dunked on by D Rose from different angles and different quality. That's all that would pop up. Goran Dragic, Chicago Bulls, just Derrick Rose dunking on him. If you now Google Goran Dragic, Chicago Bulls, it's Goran Dragic in a Chicago Bulls jersey. I think that some kid or one of his kids walked up to him and had Googled that and showed it to him. And he was like, it's no way I'm going out like that. And signed with the Bulls literally just to get that picture picture off the internet like you got to look for it now bro like i literally googled goran Dragic chicago bulls and had to like scroll down a little bit to find a picture of derrick rose dunking on him and i've never had to do that in my life i've had this theory for a minute and i hope to get him on the show one day to ask him this because i swear it's some walt disney stuff bro because you know like the walt disney theory is that um basically they made frozen so that when you Google Walt Disney frozen, it stopped popping up with all the theories about him freezing his head or freezing the thing his is, is that frozen, though, is a, is a Pixar movie. So I think people more so Google Pixar frozen. But I'm not saying that that's not a theory, but you're right. I just looked at it real quick. It is the uh, at least on my results. It is the 60th result before you get to Derrick Rose, Duncan and Gordon Josh. Hey, bro, I'm just saying, bro, I feel like there was some like. Nah, I'm not going out like that. You're not because <laughs> you got to think about this. That was rookie year Goran Dragic. And that's the one thing that he will always be known for. Yo, so he so like the only year, time he's ever been dunked on. So it's the only time he said, I've never gone for a dunk again. <laughs> I've never, I've never tried to go up. I've never tried to fight. Nope, not you're not getting me. And we all made so many videos about it. We all yup, your video pops up with Goran Dragic after he left. All like uh, when they waved him, like, there's so much stuff that pops up that now has nothing to do with Derrick Rose dunking on him. You I know think one he- thing that I got to commend you on your growth for? Because your video came up. It's probably on the second page. You stopped taking the 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 title, of the 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 words on your thumbnail and had it not on the bar. That used to irk me about your your, your thumbnail design. I'm so glad that you stepped up that thumbnail design. Bro. What you mean? I used to bro- have it not. You bro, it used to be non-centered on like I'll I'll show you. Hold on, give me one second. Yeah, you gotta you gotta show me a thumbnail. It might I'm not even saying you're wrong. Hey, they was clicking on them though, baby. I was getting that. Listen, I'm not saying you was it just hurt your OCD. My oh yes, bro. That's exactly it, bro. My OCD was literally in over (laughs) overboard at that point in time. I'm like, what is what is Pat doing? What are we doing here? I had to do something that uh every other bulls channel that uh you know is not. What what why is the letter what is going on there, bro? <laughs> what what is this? 
<laughs> I'm so glad you stopped doing that, man. <laughs> Hey, I'm not gonna lie. It looked worse when we talking about it. Like I thought that was a fire thumbnail. It looks a lot worse when we talking fire, about the it. The only thing that's not far. Why? Why is it off like that? Like, hey. bro, I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. That was when we were still we were still kind of yeah. getting familiar with each other. But ha- if you do that nowadays, I literally would have screenshot and sent it to you and be like, "Fix it, right, Fix hey, it. What you doing, dog? Why you? <laughs> I don't know what here, I thought, bro. I don't even know what the game plan was on that. Maybe I thought like if the if the bar went through the middle, for those of y'all on the podcast side, it, it basically is just like the words are they in the center of the picture, but like they off of the the I don't know the bar that I put up there so you can see the words. Yeah. I I don't I don't know why I did that. I have I have zero answers for you. It looks it's, bad. it's even more questionable now because I know how good of a designer you are. So it's just like <laughs> What was he? What, what was my brother thinking on what this, was, bro? What was the game plan on this? Bro? What was the? <laughs> That's trying the to thumbnail think I, I don't like. That's the... <laughs> hey, bro, I, don't, I have no, no idea. Thumbnail hey, fire, though. The hey, you know what's fire. you know what's funny about that though too? That's probably when my videos went the lowest. Like Muggs was not clicking on videos at that point. I was like, dang, I suck out here. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, they hate me again. Uh man, now nah, that that's funny though. But yeah, that's my that's my Goran Dragic uh, conspiracy theory. I think he did it all for the. Uh, all for the 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 pictures to go away. He's trying to hide the picture. for the clout. It's for is that anti clout? Is this the first time somebody's ch- chasing anti clout? He is wants anti clout, bro. Well, I mean, uh, technically Nikola Jokic is chasing anti clout, but <laughs> they won't <laughs> give it to him, bro. Yeah, That's so, funny. <laughs> hey, two years, bro. Two years left, max. When is his contract up? Whenever his contract is up, two years before that, he's getting up out of here. <laughs> that's funny bro bro because you, you, you heard him say that he, he he's tired of people trying to analyze what how much he loves basketball it's like bro you literally show up to training camp every year and it's like god dang i gotta go it's he looks like what we were the first day of school back when the summer ended like dang come on man hey, bro, clean but i Yo- don't want to be here Jokic, Jokic is hilarious because when you look at like he'll be mad about that but then he'll be like hey man i just don't want to be famous yeah, like, hey, bro, you know you in the NBA, right? Like <laughs> you're MVP. You you've won the MVP. <laughs> Hold up. Jokic is he's in the first year of a 5-year contract. No shot he finishes that contract. He's finishing the contract. I say Jokic will play till he's 30. And I say the only way that Jokic retires before the end of the contract is if Denver wins another title. Bro, I don't even think that. I just, I think he's just gonna be like, that's enough. Let let something happen. Let a small injury happen, bro. He tweak an ankle, he gonna be done, bro. I, I, and it's I, not I, even that he don't. It's not that he don't love basketball. I think for him, basketball is just something that he's good at, though. Yeah, I mean, where he's just like, nah, I can go out there, I can put up 30, 12, and thirteen, and yeah, it's it's a fun time for a couple of hours. But then he want to be able to leave and nobody look at him. Well, the thing is, is that he does get that in the offseason, though, because when's the last time you've seen Jokic in the offseason? That man, the moment the season ends for the Denver Nuggets, you don't. I wonder if he even shows up for an exit interview anymore for the Denver Nuggets. You know, everybody, they do those yeah, interviews yeah. in this season. He's just like, hey, I'll fax it to you. I'm gone. I, I, I just, I wonder, like, is it different? I wonder if it's just American culture, because, you know, like in America, it's no, like, like, Muzz don't respect you here. Like, they gonna sit there and stick a phone up in your face. Like, I wonder if American culture bothers him. Because, like, if you wild out over in Serbia, uh, good night, Irene. <laughs> like, 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 listen, listen. You know Jokic got some power over there. He just be like, oh, he probably got like a, he just tap his shoulder twice and then somebody come behind him and snatch somebody, him. Somebody, his, his three brothers show up, bro. Like, the Jokic <laughs> brothers just run, like, run Serbia, bro. Like, hey, bro, that must, that, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just different. I get what he's saying. I get that he kind of just want people to leave him could alone. You, could you imagine if you piss Jokic off and all he does is smile at you? Like, I, that'd be the most terrifying thing because I'd be like, 
Hey, hey fam, I'm going to be real with you. I was talking to somebody about this today. I bet you post-NBA Jokic does not get fat. I bet you he gets in ridiculously uh, oh, uh, fat, good he's shape. He's going to be wrestling bears for fun. Bro, I bet you he gets in ridiculously good shape. He's going to be doing like UFC with his brothers and stuff like that. We're going to see Jokic like later and be like, man, can you imagine if he actually played with that body? Like, good Lord. <laughs> he would be the crazy. greatest center of all time. That's crazy. Oh, oh let's man, get let's get up here, out of man. here, Brody. Another fire pie for y'all, man. Follow us on everything at Locked On Bulls. You can follow me on everything at Pat the Designer. And uh, somebody put some conspiracy theory music on that. I feel like I had a good theory on that Dragic thing. Paul's traumatic stress disorder. I'm just Paul's just... traumatic stress disorder is crazy, yo. Yeah, it's crazy. You guys follow me at CEO Hayes. We want to thank you guys for tuning in to Locked On Bulls. Free and available on every podcasting app and platform of your choice, as well as YouTube. For Pat the Designer, I'm Hayes. This has been Locked On Bulls. We out of here. Peace, y'all. Peace.